Well, hey there, everyone. So today we're going to talk about the main bearings for the Todd engine. So just yesterday, we got the high pressure side main bearing fully assembled. Um, got the bearing cap on and just about all the parts on there. So on these big stationary steam engines, I mean, this one has a 23 inch diameter main journal by I believe 42 inches long. It's all Babbitt lined. Uh, it's not roller bearing or anything like that. And the bearing is in four pieces. You have a bottom shell, and then you have two side bearings, and of course the uh, Babbitt that's in the bearing cap. And in order to adjust it, the only adjustment really is that you can bring the bearing cap down a little closer to it as it wears. And you have these uh, tapered plates here with a couple of, uh, there it is, pieces of all thread. You bring those nuts down and that brings that tapered piece up, which will force the uh, side bearing in. So you can bring it in till it's just about snug. You know, if, if you're running the engine and you're getting a little bit of pounding, uh, it could be that the bearings are loose. So you tighten them up. Now, if you tighten them up too much, then the bearing will start to warm up. So you want to get yourself adjusted to the point where it's not pounding, it's not, there's no visible back and forth movement, and it's not heating itself up. So, you know, and it's, it's one of those things that uh, the old time stationary engineers could, you know, just kind of figure out by feel. So with the high pressure side done, we're going to move over here to the low pressure side and I'll show you how this thing is put together. So this is what we call the, the bearing window and there's the shaft itself. I'm gonna get in here today and clean this up some because we're gonna start putting this side together. Right now it's sitting on a few blocks of wood and I have a 100 ton porta power cylinder outside underneath the uh, universal joint coupling to uh, to pick this up when it's time to slide the uh, uh, the lower liner in uh, that right there um, the other day um, we we're doing some measuring and the distance between the end of the of the crankshaft and and the uh, bed plate was a little bit too close it was like the crankshaft was sitting an eighth of an inch too far north so I put a 50 ton cylinder in there sideways and gave it a little push and it just whoop, went straight over without hardly any effort at all. Um, so what I'm gonna do today here, I'm gonna clean this all out and uh, get ready to put all this back together and I'll show you what all the various parts look like. All right. So this right here is the uh, lower bearing shell. This is upside down and it has a Babbitt lining and this one here has a Babbitt uh, uh, thrust surface on it. And uh, for us to install it, what we'll do is just basically pick it up the way it is, set it on the journal and then give it a little bit of a push and it'll It'll ride, you know, it'll ride around the, the journal and suck itself right into place. Okay. Uh, that was kind of a nice feature that the uh, that the Todd Todd engines had it was making it real easy to uh, replace the bearings. As a matter of fact, you just have to jack the, the crankshaft up a tiny bit, and then you can roll this out, and you would do that. Oops with the use of a tool that looks like this. And then this would fit in those notches, and then you could just use this as a handle to rotate it around. Now this is not the one for this engine. This was uh, one that I found at Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel in Steubenville uh, for that um, cross compound coreless down there that we unsuccessfully tried to preserve about 12, 13 years ago. But it does give me an idea for what I have to make in order to have a tool for this. And I don't think we're going to need it for installing this, but I'm going to make one up anyways because we're going to have to pull these out at some point because I want to rebab it 
uh, the lower shelves. There's a lot of cracking in there, surface isn't all that well. When I do, we'll have a good tool to take it out with. Um, the reason I'm putting these shelves in the way it is, the way they are right now, uh, is that we need to be able to rotate the crankshaft in order to do our alignment and to get the high pressure side, you know, verify where it's at, if it's where it needs to be before we put the rebar and the concrete in and then get, you know, stuck to the earth forever and never be able to adjust it. But once this is together and all the concrete's done, then we can go pull this back apart, roll these out, melt the babbit out of it, stick them back in place, put the babbit right in place, and then pour the new bearings, um, do that at that time. Now, another reason is we don't know for sure when this thing was installed, just how perfectly level these were from side to side or a little off. So the the bearing may not be touching the shaft exactly right all around it and it's impossible in this situation to do the the old school method of you know putting the bluing on and then set the shaft in and see where the high spots are it's hard to do that when the thing is 130 tons uh, so <clears throat> we're going to re-pour them and then with the with the shaft in place and then we'll know for sure that it's uh, getting a good bearing. Uh, so these are the constituent parts. Uh, this here is one of the side bearings and it has babbit on one side, cast iron, and you can see it's got a uh, bit of a taper. And then that is one of the uh, adjustment uh, wedges that would go back behind here and it would pull up to push this in. There is also the uh, bearing for the other side. Now notice there is no corresponding taper piece because in the, how many years we've had this thing? 30 years or so we've had it. One's gotten lost. Now whether it got stolen at some point, misplaced, who knows what. I've looked everywhere around here. I cannot find it. Fortunately, it is just you, know, you could take a piece of two and a half inch plate, uh, burn out, and then machine it, and then put the taper on there. That, you know, that's a relatively simple part to remake, so we're going to have to do that. Um, and we'll get it here the day before I find the original, which is, you know, somewhere, but I doubt it's actually here because we've moved everything. The only thing that's been here long enough for that to have been, been in are the two containers up on the hill and I have went through them a dozen times. All right, so now we're down to the uh, main bearing cap. So we'll get in here and clean this thing up and repaint it and get it ready to go. Um, you have the three threaded holes, uh, the middle one for lifting, uh, and when this is in place, there are these um, adapter plugs that go in there that turn those into oiling holes. These big openings are inspection ports, so you can look down in at the bearing. You can also pour oil down in there on the bearing if you have to. And then the tie-down bolts and the wedge adjusting uh, threads come up through there. It has two large steel uh, tie bolts that go through it because this bearing cap serves as the top structural member of the bed plate. And then on these big engines that are putting out several thousand horsepower, you know, it's putting this, uh, bed, this um, uh, bearing cap in a lot of tension every time the engine, you know, makes a stroke. Well, cast iron is not very good in tension, but great in compression. So they put a couple of tie bolts in there and squeeze it together and that gives this cast iron a lot more strength and believe me in some of these big engines they were putting out so much power that they were literally breaking the iron parts breaking the bed plates breaking the connections between the cylinders and the bed plate breaking the bearing caps uh, because they were putting out more power than the cast iron could actually handle um, so that's a uh, that's basically what we've got going on here for the uh, for the main bearings. We're going to get all this stuff cleaned up and and get that bearing put back together here very soon. All right, so I went up and climbed into the uh, into the 
bearing window of the LP side that I'm now sitting on top of the journal with the trusty needle scaler and uh, needle scaling the, uh, the return or the counterweight uh, on, the, on the crankshaft. So I'm going to get all this uh, needle scaled. We're going to paint the ends of the crankshaft black and then get down in here, <coughs> clean all of this out do some needle scaling back on either side here and eventually we'll get all this repainted here and uh, even paint down inside the the, uh, the crank pit there um, but it's uh, you know it's it's kind of slow going here with the but it works just fine the air is being made by the 70 ton locomotive. That's the only thing that I have with a uh, with a smaller size air compressor instead of running the, the big um, gasoline driven compressor. So it just got me thinking about doing a lot of this kind of work. That we're going to take the that that Honda compressor that is in the tender for 58. That, I don't know if some of you remember years ago we had all sorts of trouble with it, but either get that one running or replace it or something and then disconnect the tender from the locomotive and then we can just we just bring it down here and spot it out there and use that for making compressed air and we won't have to run the locomotive in that case um, i also today just got done uh, winterizing the uh the 58 well not the, not the complete process but we did the first step uh, filled the uh, boiler up with air and ran it back and forth a little bit, blowing as much air out as possible. Disconnected the injectors and some other lines. Um, and um, probably another week or two, we'll get together and we'll take a bunch more lines apart, take the dome lid off, inspect in there. I'm going to bring the dome lid in to... Uh, I got to drill and tap two holes for jack bolts on it, make it a little easier for removing the lid. And, uh, you know, we get all that work done on 58, and then it'll sit back there until next spring when she runs again. So, yeah, it's just kind of, you know, glamorous work we have going on here on the, at the Young Sam. And uh, <coughs> getting pelted with old paint chips and all that. <laughs> but hey what else are you gonna do you know might as well do something productive and uh and preserve some history in the process so um so next not this upcoming weekend but the following weekend we will be working on that last bit of grouting that we have to do under this bed plate um so if you're one of our uh members and volunteers from the local area you want to come out that saturday so not this saturday next saturday 9 a.m we're going to meet here and um we'll get that all done maybe another 60 some bags of grout but we'll get that done and then once that's done then we won't worry about grouting anything on this side of the engine uh, and just working on the other side next year so put that on your calendar hope to see you soon all right bye